So I've spent a lot of time judging my body for all the things it isn't, all the things I perceived it not to be, as beautiful, not enough, too big, too small, too skinny, not round in the right places, not thin in the right places, for stretch marks, for moles, for um, blemishes, for acne. Like I've spent so many years degrading my body and telling it that it's not good enough simply because of how it is consumed by the mass media, by the general public, judging my body off of these beauty standards that were set for me, beauty standards that I did not choose for myself, right? And so this whole time I'm measuring myself up against these ideas of people and sometimes unrealistic ideas of what bodies should look like and especially about what black women bodies look like. And I'm doing the work to unlearn all those things that I have been programmed to believe, all the things that I reinforce myself to believe that I am not enough if I don't look like this. I am not enough if the number on the scale says this. I am not enough if you know my skin isn't all the way clear, if it is, if it has any blemish or any imperfection, right? And so I'm do doing all this work to unlearn that stuff because I realize how much of a miracle my body actually is, right? We tend to look at our bodies in a way that is consumed by men, by the male gaze, by the white male gaze to be specific, right? But we are so much more abundant than that. We are so much more magical than that. So much more um, beautiful than that, right? Like we cannot be boiled down to these three body types, right? That, that are celebrated, these three things, like the ratio between your bust, your waist, and your butt, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but so many of us count ourselves out so many of us, you know, tear ourselves down when we are magical, beautiful beings, right? Like my body is not just here to be consumed by men. It is not here to be critiqued by women. It is not here to be judged on a scale. My body is here to act as a home to my spirit, to my soul, right? And so if I look at my body as a home, if I look at it as some place to rest, some place to heal, some place to thrive, to be loved, then I have to change the way that I think about my body. Because the, the truth is, is that my body is beautiful. My body is beautiful and not in a cliche way, but in an honest and authentic way. My body heals me. My body works to keep me safe. My body works to keep me alive. My body heals me every single day in ways that I cannot see. My heart is beating without me having to think about it, right? My mind is working without me having to actively think about my mind working. The blood is flowing through my body without me having to physically do anything, right? In this moment, at this time, because there are times when people's blood are not flowing. There are times when people need um, extra help, right? To clean their blood, to clean their systems, to, to eat, right? I'm able to do all these things and how dare I boil myself down to fleeting opinions from the beauty marketers, right? Because the truth is, is that the world thrives when I think less of myself. The truth is that when I think less of myself, they get more money from me, right? The economy thrives off of scarcity and not feeling enough, right? This country thrives off of violence, off of you not feeling good enough, off of you being ill, off of you thinking ill of yourself. If I thought of myself highly, I wouldn't buy half the stuff I buy. I wouldn't buy all the makeup and, you know, all the things that I think are going to fix me, right? I would spend that money, spend that energy actually healing myself and nourishing myself, treating myself well, not waiting until I reach a certain number, not waiting until I reach a certain body type, right? I would spend that time loving myself. And the thing that would set off the economy, the thing that works against the economy and the way that the West works is self-love is prioritizing my health, right? My well-being, prioritizing the truth that has been hidden from me, that I am beautiful. I am magnificent. I am a miracle. This body put it together is a miracle, right? The fact that my skin holds me together. You know what I mean? The fact that I can see, I can taste, I can smell, I can hear, right? I can feel. And there are some people who cannot feel. There are some people who literally do not have the gift of feeling, right? A lot of us are trying to push away feelings, but a lot of us, a lot of people cannot feel pain. And that is bad. <laughs> that is bad because if you can't feel pain, you can't feel your body saying, hey, something's wrong. You know what I mean? Just the simple things that we should be marveling at. We are a wonder. You are a wonder. You are beautiful. And I am so sorry that you never felt beautiful.
I am so sorry that this world lied to you and said that you have to look a certain way to be beautiful. I am so sorry that we live in such a shallow world where we judge people based off of how they look, how they appear in the world, right? I am so sorry that we live in a society that benefits off of you hating yourself. I am so sorry. And I say that to you and I say that to myself. I am so sorry for treating myself less than simply because of how my body shows up simply because my body is trying to keep me safe. Even like hyperpigmentation, right? So I get hyperpigmentation, meaning if I get a cut or something, the scar will last for years and I keloid sometimes, right? And so that's really frustrating for me as a black woman because, you know, I'll get like little, you know, if I get an acne down here or like a hair here, um, then it'll scar and it'll darken. And it's been so frustrating to me <laughs> because I'm like, I just want to be beautiful. And I just want to be cute. I just want to be pretty. I just want to be flawless right? And I didn't really think about what hyperpigmentation actually is, right? Your body, the fact that we scab, your body has a mechanism in which, you know, things come together and harden to heal yourself, right? So every, every flaw, every, you know, mark or, you know, piece of hyperpigmentation on my face or on my body is a reminder that my body was trying to heal me. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that mind boggling? Like, Without me having to think about it, without me having to apply Neosporin or, you know, do things um, beyond just washing my face, my body works to heal me. My body is working for my good. My body wants to keep me alive. It wants to keep me safe. It wants to keep me healthy. It wants to keep me happy. And here I am talking down on my body for doing what it's supposed to do, for keeping me safe. How dare I? How dare I cheapen uh, the experience of having a body, right? in that I have to judge it now based off of what men and what healthcare systems and what beauty systems tell me that my body should be worth. Like, how dare I listen to that filth? And the thing is, on some level, it's not necessarily my fault for thinking that way because you see it in commercials, you hear the music, you see it on podcasts, right? Like, Lord God, you see it from, from these men on these podcasts talking down on black women's bodies constantly, right? But never having, uh, never having the spiritual experience of understanding how beautiful a body really is, right? And here I am, people who don't have the range or the depth, right? Or the knowledge or the wisdom to understand how beautiful a body actually is to tell me that I am not beautiful. That's crazy. <laughs> that doesn't make no sense, right? Every flaw, every freckle, every eye color, every eye shape, every strand of hair on my head is beautiful. Everything, every freckle, every mole, I have like a bunch and even these, right? I've been getting a lot of freckles and moles here. And for a while I was like, dang, like, I don't really want all those moles, but it is telling the story of my ancestors. My grandmother had these. You know what I mean? My aunt, my great aunt has these, right? These freckles, these the way that I show up in my body is the story of the lineage in which I come from, from which I come from, right? Like, so even downplaying my body is downplaying the people who came before me. Um, there are some things, even with my mother, right? There's something that she doesn't like about her body. And me and her have those same pieces. And so in my mind, you know, it's not necessarily her fault. Like she didn't really understand it, I don't think. But by her saying that, oh, I don't like this part of my body, I look at myself like, dang, is that part of my body not beautiful? Because she doesn't think her part of the body is beautiful. And we pass on, we pass down this lack of self-worth. We pass down this heaviness of not seeing ourselves as beautiful. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger, I used to cut out pictures in the magazine and put it together, like, like the perfect eyes, the perfect skin, the perfect hair, and put it together and pray that God would make me look like this woman. My self-hatred was so deep. And I was a child. I was like eight, nine, ten, praying to God to make me look like the girls in the videos, to make me look like the girls in the magazines, to make me look like anything but myself. Because I was teased. I was teased. I was really tall. I was... um. The, the tallest in my class for a long time before men hit, the boys hit puberty. Um, I was lanky, I was awkward, I was weird. Um, I had I had big gums, right? And even this, like that's that's the story of the people who I come from. The fact that my lip curls under and you can see like my smile. And now I see my smile as beautiful, but I hated my smile back then. They used to say I look like a horse or a monkey. And these things really, me kids are really mean, okay? <laughs> kids are really, really mean. And so I took that to heart. I thought like, dang, like I will never be beautiful. Like going this route with this body, 
I could never be beautiful. I could never be beautiful. I remember thinking that, like, what is the point of living if I'm never beautiful, right? Didn't like the way that my hair kinked because it was natural. Didn't like the fact that I was, you know, tall and skinny and girls had, you know, curves and they were the ones getting the, getting the guys. Didn't like the fact that I didn't have fashion sense and a DMV sense of fashion sense. <laughs> didn't like any of that, that I didn't look like my peers in any kind of way. I was very different. Right? And I wish I could go back in time and hold that little girl and tell her like, you are beautiful. You are wondrous. You are excellent. You are handcrafted by the hands that created the universe. How much more beautiful can you get than that? How much more beautiful can you get than that? Right, what a gift. What a blessing to live in this body, to be held in this beautiful home, this warm brown home, right? Like, how beautiful is it that I can play around with the things that I have on this body? How beautiful is it that I can make that choice, that I can make that decision? How beautiful is it that I get to adorn that the things that I wear have the pleasure of being, of, of adorning this body, right? That's how I need to think about that. Like, not, oh, I need to fit into this mold. No, this mold needs to fit me. And if it doesn't fit, it needs to go. Like, anything that has me questioning my worth, my value, my beauty has to go. If it's the commercials, it has to go. What I love about social media is that I'm seeing more women who I resonate with. I never resonated with the video vixen. Shout out to y'all. Never rep like um, resonated with the women who are always sexy, always fine, always hot, right? I'm a late bloomer in every sense of the word. And I feel like I'm, I'm blooming late into this knowledge of my own beauty, of my own worth, of my own value. And I love that for me. <laughs> I love that for me because the truth is I never fit in. I mean, I never fit in. I was always the weird girl. I was always the one that was made fun of. I was always the one that was dragged by my peers. Um, and at the time I didn't like it, but now I do. I do like it. I like that I never had an affinity towards fashion. You know, fashion in the sense of like what was in and trending back then because we couldn't afford it. Okay, we shopped at thrift stores and all this other stuff. And that actually played as a blessing into my life. Even though back then I was made fun of because I had high waters, oh God, with white socks. <laughs> Off name shoe, off brand shoes, off brand clothes, everything, right? And I was made fun of, and I tried so hard to fit into this mold um, of what was considered popular, beautiful, whatever. And in elementary school, I said, forget it, whatever. It's not gonna be me. I'm just me. And for a long time, I walked with this understanding that I was not beautiful because it was easier. It hurt less to expect me to be beautiful and then to be disrespected than for me. Um, to say, oh, I'm just not beautiful and that's okay, right? So I accepted this. And even though I thought that I was protecting myself, it really was feeding into a lie that I believed for a long time, I am not beautiful. Why try? Why try? I'm not beautiful. Why try? Instead of having my feelings hurt and trying, why, why see myself as beautiful if I can't be what is on TV, what is on the magazine, what is praise at high school? You know what I'm saying? So I went through life like kind of okay, but I'm realizing how toxic that was. I wish I had someone telling me every day, you are beautiful. You are enough. Do you not see you? Do you not see you? <laughs> right? Like, why can't I brag on myself? Like, we're Black women are always taught to humble themselves. Black women are gorgeous. Fine. Okay? And every other kind of woman that exists comes from Black women. Like, just think, just think about that, right? And we believe this lie that that there's something about us that is not beautiful. Like if the first woman was black woman, if the first woman was, was, was found in Africa, okay? <laughs> the first one was a black woman and every other woman comes from black women, then how dare I say I'm not beautiful compared to the women who came from the people who made me? Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't. And I'm even starting to see like the beauty in my body, like thank you hair for curling into itself and giving me a hug. Thank you for coiling together and loving me and keeping me warm and not wanting to go away from me, right? Shrinkage is real, <laughs> but I but I see that in a poetic way that like my hair is like, no, I love you. I wanna hold on to you. I wanna hold on to my sisters and my brothers. I wanna, you know, like I feel like everything that makes up a black woman body is that of community, is that of care, is that of uh, joy and love. Like my hair loves itself so much <laughs> that it wants to entangle itself with each other. How beautiful is that, right? Like, how beautiful is it to know that I am made up of love? I am made up of love. I am literally the putting together of people who at one point loved each other. I am the making up of people who make me. My body is because they were. 
And I refuse to downplay my ancestors. I refuse to downplay myself. And I refuse to downplay the people who will come after me. I need to love myself so that if I have children and if I have daughters or even sons, right? I need to love myself so much so that they see me in them and they know that they are beautiful. That they know their worth, they know their value. They know that their body is not just here to be consumed by men or by women. Like your body is not just here to be consumed by, by the world. You are not to be consumed. You are to love yourself. You are to be loved, not consumed. And that's the difference, right? Like so many of us are chasing love, but we're really chasing to be consumed. And to me, that is such a uh, backwards and shallow way to get affection as opposed to being loved. Because love is not dependent on how you look, on someone's preference. Love is not dependent on you dumbing yourself down or making yourself into something that you are not. That is not love. That is consumption, that is fast food, and everything here in the country is fast food, right? When you are a meal, you take time, okay? You're an acquired taste, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like, you deserve to be loved for who you are, not for how you look. Like, how insulting is it for me to say that my value rests in how I look? My value is inherent. It does not change. It does not change. If anything, my value goes up. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I understand if you feel like you're ugly. I understand if you feel like you're not cute. And, and and I've been seeing some things around, like, people accepting that they're ugly, right? Or people accepting that they um, don't have pretty privilege, pretty, pretty privilege. And that is a thing. That is real. I'm going to be fair. Um, because we live in a society where European features are celebrated. Surprise. <laughs> um, and um, where if you don't have those features you tend to feel less pretty or they'll say like you're less valuable and all this other stuff. So like, if you feel that way, it's not your fault, right? It's not your fault. Like we have been programmed to believe that we are ugly, that we're the worst, that we're the dumbest, that we are the scum of the earth, the bottom of the barrel, right? But the truth is, is that you are beautiful and your beauty isn't necessarily lining up with Eurocentric features or Eurocentric, Eurocentric ideals or ideas of what beauty is. Because the truth is beauty standards change. I've watched videos from you know certain channels where they talk about the beauty standards and how they've changed from the 1920s to the 2020s and how different they are, right? If we spent all this time trying to make ourselves fit this idea of what beauty is through all those decades, we'd be crazy, we'd be sick, right? We'd be ill and some of us would be dead, would be dead. So instead of trying to fit into this Babylonian um, experience or idea of what beauty is, how about we redefine what beauty is for ourselves. Yes, I am cute. Yes, I love my skin. Yes, I love my hair. I love my body, right? And it's like, yes, because I think it's cute because I determine what beauty is to me, but also because I know how much of a blessing it is to have this body, how much of um, a blessing it is to have a body that tries to heal itself, even like with some of the chronic illnesses I have, right? Sometimes my um, body does too much. <laughs> it's doing a lot, girl, right? <laughs> like you're doing a lot, calm down. But even in that, it's trying to love me. Even in that, it's trying to heal me. Like when my, um, what is it? When my immune system is acting up and it's doing, it's overdoing, right? And when it's overdoing, it's overdoing, but it's still trying to keep me safe. And though it is frustrating, like the symptoms that I experience because my immune system is overdoing it, it's still a reminder that my body is still trying to take care of me. It's still trying to love me. It's still trying to show me love every single day, right? When I drink, when I'm able to swallow, when I'm able to see, like when my, when my pupils dilate and they, and they contract, right? That's my body loving itself. It's, it's responding to light because it's trying to keep my eyes healthy and safe. It's trying to help me see. If my eye, pupils were dilated, I can't see nothing. It's too bright, right? And even in darkness, my pupils dilate, right? So I can see like just how beautiful that is. If we just spent time learning about the body, learning about ourselves, learning about our quirks and the things that we enjoy, the things that we don't enjoy, right? Like if we spent more time on that than trying to be um, marketable for the world, we would be in such a better place. We'd be healthier, we'd be happier, livelier. We would celebrate the beauty of other people and not try to clamor our way to the top of this ever-changing beauty industry, ever-changing um, ideals of what beauty is and just sit and rest in the fact that I am beautiful. I don't have to compete. <laughs> I don't have to tear nobody down. I don't have to tear myself down. 
I don't have to, you know, judge myself based on somebody else's beautiful, magnificent body. I can look at my own and see that I am enough, that I am enough and you are enough. You are beautiful. Change your perspective. You are not here to be consumed. You are here to be loved. And that first love has to come from you. It has to come from you. And you have to make that decision to see yourself as love, to love yourself, to treat yourself with soft and kind hands and soft and kind words. Because another thing, your body hears what you say about it and it believes you. I wondered why for so long I felt so uh, such lack of self-worth and self um, beauty. And a lot of it is because of the way I talk to myself. I'm with my thought. I'm with myself all day long. The thoughts I have, ugh, I don't like that. Ugh, I wish, uh, you know, oh man, like those constant thoughts that I'm telling myself every single day. And you would never talk to your friend like that. If you're a good friend, you would never talk to yourself like that. You would never talk to a child like that to be like, oh girl, I don't know what to tell you, girl. You're not cute. You would never tell a kid that. And again, what I'm learning, shout out to Miss Lorraine. Mm -hmm. What I'm learning is that treating ourselves like children is the way to healing, is the way to self-love, and is the way um, to kindness and gentleness to ourselves. Because if we treat ourselves how we would treat children, it would change the game. If we treat ourselves how we treat children, and the fact is you are still a child, you're just grown now. <laughs> you're that same person that you were at seven, you're the same person you were at five, at three, at two, at one, in the womb, except now you have gained more experience and knowledge and you're a little taller. You're a little more articulate. You know what I'm saying? Like you got bills now, but you're still the same person. And you deserve to be treated with and talked to with kindness, love, gentleness, care, right? Joy. You know, like softness, you deserve that. And it, you don't have to earn that. You don't have to earn that. It's not when you get, then you know. You have to make that decision today, in this moment, to see yourself as beautiful. And I'm gonna take this moment to see myself as beautiful. Alicia, you are gorgeous, you are fine, you're brilliant, you're creative, you're smart, <laughs> you're ethical, <laughs> you're you're kind, right? You're gorgeous, I love your brown skin, I love the freckles that you got, that you inherited from your family, I love your eye shape, I love your eyebrows, even though they be acting up, I love that, I love that about you. I love your hair, I love that my hair curls into itself, I love that my hair um, loves itself and clings to itself, right? And you can talk to yourself the same way. I love my skin, I love my skin. I love my skin. I love that it keeps me safe. I love that it heals me. I love that it's the first defense, right, against disease and illness. I love that it heals itself, even though it shows up as hyperpigmentation or keloids. I love myself. I love my teeth. Thank you, teeth, for helping me to eat food. Thank you, tongue, for allowing me to taste. Thank you, lips. I love my lips. <laughs> I love my lips, they're full. I love them, they help me to articulate myself, right? Thank you, nose. Thank you for the ability to smell. Thank you for the ability to see. <sighs> Thank you, eyelashes, for keeping oil and dust and debris from out my eye, even though sometimes eyelashes fall into my eye, right? Like, thank you. Thank you, body, for healing me. Thank you, digestive system, for keeping what I shouldn't eat out even though it caused me discomfort. Thank you for trying to get the stuff that's not good for me out of my body. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sweat glands, for keeping me cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, hairs, for allowing me to feel, like, for allowing to act as an antenna, that you can feel things, right, before you can feel them if you know what I'm talking about, right? Thank you, thank you hairs on my arms for raising when I don't feel safe or I don't feel comfortable. Thank you for that intuition, for that knowing. Thank you. Thank you feet for allowing me to walk. Thank you, thank you. Thank you toenails, fingernails for protecting my limbs. Thank you for opening things and scratching things. Thank you. This is the way that we should talk to ourselves. Not in a way that points out the flaws. Everybody got flaws, y'all. Everybody has things that they do not like. There's no such thing as a perfect body. And it might sound cliche, but it is true. Because even the idea of what is perfect changes. It changes, but your worth, your value, your beauty, your brilliance, your miracle of a body, like it's never changing. The value of yourself never changes. And that's the beauty. We can live outside of this paradigm that says that we have to earn our worth, earn our value. We can, we can free ourselves from this need to chase these standards that are always changing. You have that power, you have that freedom to stand up straight and tall and say, yo, I am somebody. Look at me, look at me. 
and it is it is so discouraging to hear people talk down on people based on how they look but even beyond that like the idea that you can take the life like the, the fact that people's lives are being taken right um like they have no value that like they were never sacred you are sacred you are a sacred being the creator of the universe mourns when you mourn yourself the creator of the universe mourns when you are not treated correctly or kindly he mourns but it feels good to me to know that i have a father out there who created me who loves me unconditionally who sees the beauty who has placed the beauty in me you know what i'm saying whose beauty i reflect you feel me like if we are all reflections of god if we are all reflections of the hands that created the universe how dare we talk down to how dare we speak ill ill of how dare we disrespect anyone including ourselves including ourselves how dare you talk down to yourself do you not know that you're a miracle do you not know how beautiful you are and if you don't that's okay but i'm here to tell you that you are beautiful take time actually scan your whole body you will find many reasons to be grateful. You will find many reasons to say that I am beautiful. Wow. Wow. Even that fat that's stored in your body. That fat is stored in your body because it's trying to keep you safe. <laughs> it's trying to keep you safe. All of it. All of it works together as, as, as a poem, as a story of love. And we take that story, we crumple it up, we tear it up, we rip it to shreds, we throw it away and we say it's not enough. How sad. How sad when you are so much more brilliant than a than a scale what a number on a scale than the words or a scale from a man or a woman for that matter it don't matter like you are so much more brilliant and sacred than anyone can quantify than anyone can put words to there are no words to describe how beautiful you are no words no words with crust in your eye you're gorgeous okay with hair on your chin you're gorgeous on your lip, you're gorgeous. With extra pounds on your body, you are gorgeous. You are beautiful. If you can only start to see that. If you could only start to see that. And I'm starting to see that for myself. And I pray that you start to see that as well. That you take the time to be intentional about seeing that. Because it does take time and attention. And intention, right? Like, it's not like I'm looking at myself like, ooh, I'm cute. There are moments that I feel like, oh, I'm cute, right? But when I really get down to it and really think about the way that my body is made, that it was handcrafted, that it was knit together, the way that my ball and socket joints, right? in my hips and my shoulders, like the way, that, the way that my muscles work together so I can move and animate myself so I can walk, right? Things that we don't pay attention to when we're walking, how our ab tight, tightens itself so we can stand up straight. Things like that, right? How every month, you know, and th this is the thing, like I'm saying this stuff and some people don't experience that, right? Like some people don't have the pleasure or the privilege to experience what we have. You know what I mean? Like how every month, like every month, something shows up in love. Every month, like how beautiful. And there are some people who cannot um, experience it. And I, don't, and I don't mean this in an ableist way. I mean it in a way that you have to find things about yourself that you enjoy, right? about yourself that brings you to marvel to marvel at yourself because you are a work of art you are a masterpiece okay you are a masterpiece ain't amount of ain't no amount of photoshop nothing can come close to how beautiful you are even the fact that our face are not that our face i'm talking about like the symmetry of our face right that's how creative our god is is that on either side we'll find differences i know on this side this this lip goes back further than this one it just naturally like it's just how it goes i love that about me because it's like a little it's like you know when you're when if you're crafting something by hand there is still like a feelings of humanness right like there are still signs of like oh this was made by a person it's handmade it's handcrafted meaning every single one is different how boring would it be if all of us look the same if all of us had symmetry right if all of us had the same thoughts same experiences that's how glorious our god is is that he's willing to make us and put little individual marks like i only have a dimple on this side don't have one on this side right like I love that. This eyebrow, I feel like one of these eyebrows end, I think this one ends before this one. Um, but either way, like the little things that make me me, even the size of my hands, they're different. The size of my feet, they're different. The length of my legs, they're different, right? And people would say that, oh, imperfection, not good enough. 
when really that is the beauty of it. I am so beautiful, you cannot create me. <laughs> I am so beautiful, you cannot create me. You cannot thumb, you can't put your thumb on me. That's how beautiful I am. That's how marvelous I am, right? And a lot of us have been taught that if we speak about ourselves in this way, in this manner, it is arrogance. But no, they're trying to keep us from the truth that we are beautiful. And when I look at myself as beautiful, I turn to God like, thank you for making me, right? All the glory still goes to him. But I can still glory in the fact that I am beautiful. How beautiful it is to be chosen, to be handcrafted. How beautiful it is to have breath in my lungs. How beautiful. Even when I'm sick, right? And I have a fever. I know I have a fever because my body's doing what it's supposed to do. It's trying to heal me. <laughs> so while it's not a pleasant experience, I know that it is necessary and I'm glad that I can have an immune system and white blood cells that fight off diseases because there are some people who need extra help who cannot do that. You see what I'm saying? I hope you do. And I hope that you start to see yourself as beautiful because you are. It is not a question. It is, there's no measurement. There's no comparing. Like your beauty cannot compare to other people. Like we mess ourselves up. We are so human and annoying and basic like that, right? That we compare ourselves to other people. Stop. There is no comparison. You two are two totally different beings for two totally different reasons, right? And you are beautiful and it is valid. It is valid. So please free yourself from these uh, patriarchal, uh, Babylonian, <laughs> um, whatever word you wanna use, like white supremacist ideals of what beauty is because it has you messed up. If you cannot see your own beauty, they win. Don't let them win. You deserve, you deserve, and you deserve that peace and that joy to be like, you know what? I am fine. With my gray hair, I am fine. With my wrinkles, I am fine. With my fat, I am fine. With my cellulite, I am fine. With my chin hairs, I am fine. Okay, it is your pleasure <laughs> to lay eyes on me. And it's true, it is your pleasure. Like I look at people all the time like, dang, they are so pretty, I love this. Or I hear them saying, oh my God, what a blessing. There's some music that brings me to tears. What a gift, what a pleasure. Like my pleasure, right? It is my pleasure to be able to hear that music. It is my pleasure. It is my blessing that I'm able to see the beauty and lay eyes on beautiful people every single day. Every single day. And we miss the beauty in our lives because we're too worried about what is marketable, what is backed by capitalism, what is backed by white supremacy or patriarchy, right? Or anti-blackness, massage noir. <laughs> like we're so wrapped in all these things um, that we fail to see the brilliance and the beauty and how sad would it be to go your whole life without seeing yourself as enough, without seeing yourself as beautiful? And that's something I wrote in my journal. Like, how horrible would it be to get to the end of my life and never have seen me as beautiful? And it's crazy because I remember in high school, I didn't feel beautiful. And I look back on those photos now, I'm like, wow, I was gorgeous. Why couldn't I see it? Hindsight is twenty twenty. Why couldn't I see that? And so I refuse to live my life like that anymore. <laughs> I refuse. I refuse to live my life with this belief that I am not good enough, that I am not valuable, that I am not pretty enough. Like as a photographer, I'm so used to taking photos of other people. It is very rare that I get photos of me. And now I'm starting to do my own um, photo shoots for myself, like self portraits, because I am beautiful and I'm worthy of being captured in time. I am worthy of, you know, celebrating my own beauty and not just the beauty of other people. I spend so much time trying to remind people, you are beautiful, that I forget to look at myself in the reflection, that I, re that I avoid the reflection in the mirror. There's, there have been years where I have not looked at myself in the mirror on purpose, right? Look at myself in the mirror to brush my teeth, make sure I got no uh, crusties, but not like to look at myself and marvel at how beautiful I am. What a gift it is to be me. What a gift it is to be made of such beautiful people. What a gift it is to carry the legacy down of other folks, right? And to see reflections of them in my being, to have their stories continue to be told. How beautiful, how beautiful, and how beautiful are you? That's a rhetorical question because your beauty is, can, again, cannot be quantified, cannot be, you know, place labels on, can't be, it's so, it's so ghetto here. And I mean that, <laughs> I mean that sincerely, like it's just, the, we don't have the language, we don't have the range, we don't have the depth to understand just how glorious our beings are because here in this country, everything is about consumption. 
everything is about consumption or you know making things simple and like i said everything is fast food here you are a home cooked meal that took weeks and months to prepare so you cannot judge yourself based on a mcdonald's dollar list to a home cooked meal with love and attention and intention and details right like do not cheapen your worth and your value do not make yourself fit into a box that was never meant for you never meant for you your value is out of this world and i see you i celebrate you you are beautiful you are enough celebrate yourself take a photo of yourself speak kindly to yourself write love letters to yourself that's what i'm doing <laughs> like speak kindly to the to the different parts of your body right like because you're worthy of that you're worthy of that kindness you're worthy of that love i love you I see you. You are beautiful. Yes, you. <laughs> you are enough. You are beautiful. I don't even need to see you to know that you're beautiful. I know it for a fact. It's time that you know that for a fact as well. All right. So keep loving yourself. Keep loving each other. Keep celebrating yourself. Keep celebrating each other. Do not cheapen yourself because you are far too expensive to be compared to the dollar menu at McDonald's. <laughs> All right. I see you. I love you. And I will talk to you on the next one.